Empedocles was a Greek pre-Socratic philosopher and a native citizen of Akragas, 4-5, a Greek city in Sicily. Empedocles' philosophy is best known for originating the cosmogonic theory of the four classical elements. He also proposed forces he called love and strife which would mix and separate the elements, respectively. Born, 494 BC, Akragas, Sicily, Didi C. 434 BC, aged around 60. Unknown. Eripre Socratic Philosophy Region Western Philosophy School Pluralist School. Main interests. Cosmogenesis, ontology, epistemology. Notable ideas. All matter is made up of four elements, water, earth, air and fire. The cosmic principles of Philotes, love, and Nikos, strife. The sphere of Empedocles. Theories about respiration, the Clepsidra experiment. Influences. Parmenides, Pythagoranism, Alcmion of Croton. Influenced. Gorgias, Socrates Critias, Aristotle, Lucretius, Friedrich Nietzsche. Influenced by Pythagoras, died c. 495 BC, and the Pythagoreans, Empedocles challenged the practice of animal sacrifice and killing animals for food. He developed a distinctive doctrine of reincarnation. He is generally considered the last Greek philosopher to have recorded his ideas in verse. Some of his work survives, more than is the case for any other pre-Socratic philosopher. Empedocles' death was mythologized by ancient writers, and has been the subject of a number of literary treatments. Empedocles, Empedocles, was a native citizen of Akragas in Sicily. He came from a rich and noble family. Very little is known about his life. His grandfather, also called Empedocles, had won a victory in the horse race at Olympia in the 71st Olympiad, O.L. LXXI, 496-95 BC. His father's name, according to the best accounts, was Medan. All we can be said to know about the dates of Empedocles is that his grandfather was still alive in 496 BC, that he himself was active at Akragas after 472 BC, the date of Theron's death, and that he died later than 444 BC. Empedocles broke up the Assembly of the Thousand, perhaps some oligarchical association or club. He is said to have been magnanimous in his support of the poor, severe in persecuting the overbearing conduct of the oligarchs, and he even declined the sovereignty of the city when it was offered to him. According to John Burnett, there is another side to his public character. He claimed to be a god, and to receive the homage of his fellow citizens in that capacity. The truth is, Empedocles was not a mere statesman. He had a good deal of the medicine man about him. We can see what this means from the fragments of the purifications. Empedocles was a preacher of the new religion which sought to secure release from the wheel of birth by purity and abstinence. Orphicism seems to have been strong at Akragas in the days of Theron, and there are even some verbal coincidences between the poems of Empedocles and the Orphixing Odes which Pindar addressed to that prince. His brilliant oratory, his penetrating knowledge of nature, and the reputation of his marvelous powers, including the curing of diseases, and averting epidemics, produced many myths and stories surrounding his name. In his poem Purifications he claimed miraculous powers, including the destruction of evil, the curing of old age, and the controlling of wind and rain. Empedocles was acquainted or connected by friendship with the physicians Pausanias, his Eromenos, and Akron, with various Pythagoreans, and even, it is said, with Parmenides and Anaxagoras. The only pupil of Empedocles who is mentioned as the sophist and rhetorician Gorgias. Timaeus and Decaerchus spoke of the journey of Empedocles to the Peloponnese, and of the admiration, which was paid to him there. Others mentioned his stay at Athens, and in the newly founded colony of There, 446 BC, there are also fanciful reports of him traveling far to the east to the lands of the Magi. The contemporary life of Empedocles by Xanthus has been lost. Deathed it.
According to Aristotle, he died at the age of 60, c. 430 BC, even though other writers have him living up to the age of 109. Likewise, there are myths concerning his death, a tradition, which is traced to Heraclides Ponticus, represented him as having been removed from the earth, whereas others had him perishing in the flames of Mount Etna. According to Burnet, we are told that Empedocles leapt into the crater of Etna that he might be deemed a god. This appears to be a malicious version of a tale set on foot by his adherents that he had been snatched up to heaven in the night. Both stories would easily get accepted, for there was no local tradition. Empedocles did not die in Sicily, but in the Peloponnese, or, perhaps, at Thorioi. It is not at all unlikely that he visited Athens. Dot dot dot. Timaios refuted the common stories, about Empedocles, at some length. Diog, v. 71 sqq. Ritter in. Preller, 162. He was quite positive that Empedocles never returned to Sicily after he went to Olympia to have his poem recited to the Hellenes. The plan for the colonization of Thorioi would, of course, be discussed at Olympia, and we know that Greeks from the Peloponnese and elsewhere joined it. He may very well have gone to Athens in connection with this. Empedocles is considered the last Greek philosopher to write in verse. There is a debate about whether the surviving fragments of his teaching should be attributed to two separate poems, Purifications and On Nature, with different subject matter, or whether they may all derive from one poem with two titles, or whether one title refers to part of the whole poem. Some scholars argue that the title Purifications refers to the first part of a larger work called, as a whole, On Nature. There is also a debate about which fragments should be attributed to each of the poems, if there are two poems, or if part of it is called purifications, because ancient writers rarely mentioned which poem they were quoting. Empedocles was undoubtedly acquainted with the didactic poems of Xenophanes and Parmenides, allusions to the latter can be found in the fragments, but he seems to have surpassed them in the animation and richness of his style, and in the clearness of his descriptions and diction. Aristotle called him the father of rhetoric, and, although he acknowledged only the meter as a point of comparison between the poems of Empedocles and the epics of Homer, he described Empedocles as Homeric and powerful in his diction. Lucretius speaks of him with enthusiasm, and evidently viewed him as his model. The two poems together comprised 5,000 lines. About 550 lines of his poetry survive.